I, I grew up like I initially my first uh, my first console was a PS2 but after the PS2 like I grew up with Nintendo stuff from there like a Wii a Nintendo DS stuff like that and I that's where a lot of my gaming background came from in the first place so like I very much had like a sweet spot for you know Nintendo games for a very long time and you know I admit that they do make some pretty nice games sometimes but my goodness do they suck as a company uh, my goodness gracious first console was the 64 the 64 is definitely a very solid console very solid console there for sure there's a time where nintendo wouldn't allow youtubers to capture 3ds games but only record it from their screen the reason people could falsely assume this to be a home console game really <laughs> that i haven't heard of again it sounds like a very nintendo thing to do there but uh i was not familiar with that one i repaired that appliance good as new and returned the little guy to the owner didn't i she was a blade, you see? Badly injured. Couldn't cook a decent meal for herself without it. Good thing I got to it early, no? Any luck with those materials yet? I need honey oil and windshield glass, remember? Uh, here you go. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, Nintendo does seem to think that their, <laughs> their player base are pretty dumb sometimes, unfortunately. Sometimes, like, you know, again, I've grown up with, like, Nintendo games, and, like, from one perspective, yeah, I'm, like, a Nintendo fan, yada yada, but calling myself that is an embarrassment sometimes at least a lot of the time they still make good games sometimes not always not always a lot of the time they do still make good fun games but my goodness nintendo does not care one bit about their fans you know these things are easy to find are they let's spend lots and lots of trouble right um yeah it was it was pretty rough um I believe it, okay? But I still don't understand why you go through that just to help me. What's that? You feel responsible because I'm fixing these things for Blade? Damn it. Fine, okay? I can see defeat. The reason my brother's working as a mechanic for you humans, and the reason that I decided to start a repair shop here for that matter, is because we know, knew that both our peoples could make it on this planet if we work together, you know? I got so busy I lost sight of that, didn't I? So, so simple, but I still forgot. Well, I'm not about to get all guessy with thank yous. That's not the kind of, of, of man on I am. So just shut up and take this, okay? There we go, the handy man on. But yeah, at least I do make some nice games sometimes. Like, I'm looking forward to a lot of Nintendo games this year. Um, like, next week, the new Kirby game is coming out, Kirby in the Forgotten Land. It looks pretty hype and like a cool change of pace for a Kirby game. I'm looking forward to that. Breath of the Wild 2 should be super hype. Um, I'm really looking forward to the new Mario Plus Rapids game. That's being developed by Ubisoft. Um, Ubisoft games are very much hit or miss a lot of the time, though it seems like they realized that it was their one opportunity to develop a Mario game, so with the first Mario Plus Rapids, they really, you know, got their stuff together to make sure that they made it a really good game. Because when else are they ever gonna have the opportunity to make a, make a Mario game, you know? Um, so I'm really looking forward to Sparks of Hope, since they, uh, I really liked the Kingdom Battle, initially, and whatnot. Um, Xenoblade Chronicles 3 is the game that I'm most hyped for, for sure. Like, I'm a big Xenoblade Chronicles fan. I love Monolith Soft. The quality that Monolith Soft puts out, man. Mm, chef's kiss. Mwah, you know? Um, I appreciate the follow there, Mr. Best. Um, but yeah, the, the new Zelda stuff coming this year with a Breath of the Wild sequel. That should be pretty cool. I really, what I really hope for the Breath of the Wild sequel is that they didn't fix the glitches of the initial Breath of the Wild. I really hope. Because Breath of the Wild is one of those games that if you're doing a casual playthrough, it is going to seem very stable and like there's basically nothing wrong here. But if you know the ins and outs of that game, oh my goodness, it's so breakable and so much fun. Like, I, I have a love-hate relationship with Breath of the Wild, but straight up, it is one of the video games, if not the top video game in terms of like, my technical know-how and ability to play the game <laughs> like in terms of like my raw glitch knowledge and what i'm able to do to uh break it in half that it's such a different game going through it like trying to break it in half than it is casually like i played it casually i only started content creation in like early 2018 so breath of the wild came up before that so i did like my first casual playthrough of breath of the wild before i was a content creator and then it was like a year or two ago that i did like my playthrough of breath of the wild on the channel but i handled it in a glitched way where i refused to do like any shrine in an intended way and i had to find like some crazy complicated workaround to every single one using glitches and jank and whatnot and it was such a different game but so much fun so my uh my number one hope 
for Breath of the Wild sequel is that it runs on well, it evidently runs on the same engine, but that they kept in like, they but that they kept the glitches because again, you're not gonna run into them in a casual playthrough anyway. So what's the harm? It just makes it more fun for those with technical know-how. So I really, really hope they keep that. I don't know how many are gonna be kept, but I really hope I can break that game in half. Um, but yeah, amazing watch people send Link flying with stasis and anything Link can stand on that's not tied down. Oh, that's just scratching the surface of breaking, <laughs> breaking the game over there. There's a lot more crazy and wacky methods people have found for like flying across the world fast, interestingly enough. I think my favorite, I don't know if there's a term for it. I don't know if it has like a proper name, but there's a thing where you can pick up basically anything that you can pick up like as a hold item. And this can include bombs, so you can even just place down your own bomb and pick it up. But things like barrels work, small rocks work, and there's a precise set of inputs that you do with like a bow where the game is confused about like, are you holding the rock? Are you holding the bow? And you're like holding the bow in one hand and holding like the item in the other hand. And then you step off a ledge and then you just fly. You just fly, you just zoom across the world. It's so funny. And if you have a bomb, it leaves like the blue light trail behind you. <laughs> it's so funny. Uh, oh, I'll catch up on this stuff here in a second. You're a blade, yes? I like to bring all the stuff you break here anytime you want, all right? I'll fix it until I drop. Just promise you this is to keep us all safe, okay? Teamwork and all that. Um, yeah, sure. We're in this together, right? You won't hear me whining like I'm the victim ever again, okay? So good luck out there, yes? I'll hold down the fort around here. Sweet. All right, and then you just like vanish and stuff. But yeah, um, second is what Nintendo would be fun. <laughs> or at least care about their fans. I think Nintendo is still like fun in terms of their games. As a company, maybe not. Acting super fun. Like, I haven't played a whole massive ton of Sega games myself, but they very clearly care a lot about their fans. <laughs> and uh, Nintendo very clearly does not care about their fans. Uh, around 2018, Nintendo stopped giving any YouTuber early access to their game. The reason they falsely claimed that YouTubers spoil the games early, although one, they would break an NDA by doing so, and two, they always are early in circulation due to shops selling them early. However, Nintendo didn't care the YouTubers were evil. <sighs> Man. <laughs> uh, amazing watch people send Link fly. Oh, I already read that. Gosh dang it. Um, but yeah, let's see here. Like, say what you will about Sega, but their PR slash community is great usually. I wish the Nintendo was more of that. Yeah, for sure. Like, I feel like from what I've seen from a lot of Sonic games, their quality is very hit or miss a lot of the time as well. But at least they care about their fans. Like, I think that that's like really evident there. I think that that's really cool to see. I wish that it was something that Nintendo had. A lot more was it uh what was the freaking new affinity mission that i had that i needed to do for the story it was like called spy games or something wasn't it manhunt i think it's that one right i think that's the one that i need to do to do chapter nine so i gotta do this affinity mission then i do chapter nine and then i do the mission to unlock scale flight and then we can finally fly in our mechs right that's the order here i see mr best redeeming a whole bunch of absolutely nothing's only the best channel point redemptions ever when was the last time i saved i'm saving again just to be safe i've never crashed or anything like that but just to just be safe um always oh, nintendo of japan though nintendo of europe is super chill and it's amazing that sonic still has fans though <laughs> honestly you're not uh you're not wrong there something that i have considered one day covering all the chat maybe for like a charity event or some sort of special wacky thing are games like sonic 06 or sonic boom I've only ever played one Sonic game and it was Sonic Unleashed and I played like a fourth of it and I was like, eh, and I couldn't play it anymore. <laughs> and this was like, this is when the Wii was, you know, the most recent console. This was like as a kid when I, when I saw Sonic in Smash Bros. And I was like, oh, he's cool. I'm going to try one of his games. I tried Sonic Unleashed and I was just like, you know, <laughs> I just, I just couldn't. <laughs> I just couldn't there. Spy games. I can have max four members. And I have three members right now. Arena, where are you? Arena? You wanna join my team? You wanna join my uh my team over here to do this affinity mission with me? Um but yeah, Sonic is inconsistent in quality, but yeah, his fan his fan base is very resilient. Fun fact, one of the classes I'm taking in university right now is a class studying resilience. And from the stuff that we've studied, I can definitely attest that, yeah, it very much seems like the Sonic fan base is resilient. Gosh dang it, does it have to be day for Arena to be here? Gosh dang it, time to go change it today. I think one of the mods that I can enable is one that lets me change the time in the menu at any point. I should really enable that mod and start using it because it seems very handy. I'm surprised that you can't change the time in the menu at any point by default. 
yeah, I'll, I'll probably enable that mod before next time, honestly. But yeah, let's see here. Nintendo loves being ass backwards. Yep. Took them used to allow their games to be shared on YouTube but when they did allow it. First, it was through the pathetic partner program where you were only able to play Nintendo stuff only and nothing else until they finally got rid of it and allowed people to play their stuff alongside others. Wait, did they only allow you to make Nintendo content? I thought the Nintendo partner program was like, your revenue goes through Nintendo and they take a cut and they have a say of like what you make. Was it was it actually like you're not allowed to make video game content on non-Nintendo games? Was that an actual part of it? Because I thought it was just like, taking part of your revenue like it, i thought it used to be like you couldn't make revenue on nintendo stuff at all so they introduced the nintendo partner program where it's like you can have some of your revenue i guess but we're also gonna like highly censor your stuff is what i thought it was um believe sonic is just a meme to occasionally show people how broken a game can be i wonder how good the uh the second sonic movie is gonna be because like <laughs> with the with the first sonic movie it had like all the makings to be a bad movie and then it wasn't it was actually pretty all right. I don't know if I'll be seeing the second one in theaters. I'll probably see it sometime after it's like out at least, but I am I am curious about it, you know? We had to give Nintendo 50% of the 50% you were making, so it was 50% then. Fun is fine out with Nintendo Enterprises, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> spy games, yeah. Let's go to Oblivia and do spy games because apparently this is required for uh, the story. to wait, I would have brought a book. Our apologies, Director General. Our blade work has been keeping us especially busy as of late. Besides, it's pretty unusual to get a direct request from you. I would hope that warranted special priority. This mission affects us all. If it's an official mission, shouldn't we take it through the normal channels? Personally, I consider it very official, but both Nagi and Vandom refused me shouted me down actually what then we're probably not even allowed to take it right let's hear the brief and why they turned you down a wise decision you're familiar with jair fortress yes in a few days we'll be hitting it with a surprise offensive of course every blade on the force is participating we built our attack strategy around the idea of limiting casualties as much as possible. As such, we'll be employing mostly long-range fighting tactics. That would be the sensible choice. Yes, and I fully support it. But it makes gathering intel nearly impossible. Um... I mean, this isn't wrong, but... I mean, he's gonna tell me what he's looking for anyway, so let's see what happens when we do this. Unfortunately, it's not that simple. If we can secure this information now, it will aid us in every future battle we face. It could also offer leverage in bargaining for an accord. I think you'll agree, this has the potential to save far more lives in the long run. All right, you've made your ideas clear. What do you want us to do? Infiltrate the fortress before we strike. Gather whatever intel you can and return here with it. Is that even possible? Any answer I give would be idle speculation. But I do believe this mission is of the utmost importance. And I also believe that your team has the best chance of getting it done. So you decided to ask us face to face? That's quite the honor. Is that sarcasm? Take it as you will, sir. What if we refuse? Then I'll ask the team with the next highest chances, and so on. Send in the damn janitors if I have to. Whatever it takes. You truly believe it's this important? I do. All right, then. We'll do it. Excellent. But we're not taking any unnecessary risks. If things get hairy, We'll cut and run empty-handed if we must. That's all hope ever comes to. Just one question, if I may. Are those really your only reasons for wanting this intel? What other reasons would there be? <laughs> Any answer? 
answer I give would be idle speculation. So My goal has always been to secure a future for humanity on this planet. It's as simple as that. All right, I'll take you at your word. Let's get back to the barracks and prepare. This one's going to be tough. Spy games. Gander their information on the ganglion by infiltrating their fortress. As it is advisable to avoid conflict, you should choose a route with few enemies. I don't care. I can just bum rush through with overdrive. You know how I was talking earlier about how, you know, I played Breath of the Wild casually back when it first came out and then played it with glitches when I started doing content creation stuff and how it was like a completely different game. That's like playing this game casually however many years ago, as opposed to now playing it while using overdrive all the time, is what it feels like the equivalent of. Like, this feels like such a different game when I'm using overdrive all the time, quite frankly, and I love it. Wait, I'm going to the Blade Barracks first? I am going to the Blade Barracks first. Um, I just now put that connection together in my head. Playing Breath of the Wild casually slash with glitches is basically the equivalent difference in a fun levels and different experience playing this game with and without overdrive from the look on your face i'm guessing you know about our meeting with the director general and from the look on yours i'm guessing you accepted the mission we'll do what we can elma was super clear if things get dangerous we'll call it off well good i'm glad to hear that don't forget you're all far more valuable to us than any intel Tatsu totally agree and definitely never forget. In other words, don't worry about us. Oh, okay. We just wanted to have a little bit of a little bit of a chat here, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> that's the lesson that we can get from Overdrive here. So, Jair Fortress or G or whatever the heck they said. It looks like I've already discovered it. It's like I've already been here, so I have a fast travel point. <laughs> so. There's that. That's what happens when you combine a overworld game with a linear story. I mean, basically every story is going to have to be linear. But I mean, you know, when you try to incorporate a story into an overworld, overworld, uh, an open world game. Oh, they are really high level enemies. I mean, I could pr I could maybe take them with overdrive if I'm only facing like one or two at a time. Uh, You suspect nothing. You suspect nothing. Aho! Um, did she just say Leon? Is that the name of a uh, the other person who was in that one skull that was never answered? I'll try. I'll try fighting. I don't. We're gonna survive, but like, I'll try. I'll try my best anyway, just for fun. Just purely for funsies. Whoa! What is happening to my camera? How many enemies are there? There's a couple. Oh, those multi-hits are not very good. Crap, that's actually really bad. I don't think I can survive this. BRB alrighty. Oh yeah, that's actually really bad. I'm gonna die, yup. My, my Ghost Walker is not gonna be good enough for that. <laughs> Here goes all our skills, by the way. Okay, gosh dang it. There goes all my TP that I've been saving up. Gosh darn you, game. I do wish there was like an item or augment that you could put on that just like made you start with like X amount of TP on respawning. Instead of none. There we go. Okay, so I actually do need to be a little bit sneaky. I actually do need to be a little bit of a sneaky, sneaky snake. It seems like, gosh darn it. Just because there's so many enemies. If I was fighting one at a time, I could probably take them with overdrive, but like... I can't spam Ghost Walker fast enough for multiple enemies with multi-hit moves that just destroy all my decoys. So how do I get into here without being noticed, huh? Am I doing it? Wow, that was easy! There we go! I made it! Uh, but now I have no TP for overdrive if there's a boss in here. This should be the fortress mainframe. Think you can get in? I can try, but... I wouldn't bother holding your breath. Even if I can, it'll take time. Better to pull the drive and analyze it later. 
All right, let's run with that. Just as soon as we're done with them. Let's take care of these things first, then we can retrieve the data. Gosh dang it, I have no TP now! Can I run outside into my scale? There's no way. There's no way the game will let me do that, will it? Whoa, the lag. I can? Wait, can I reach in there? Oh my goodness, I can! Through the wall! Time to die. Well, I don't need TP, I guess, when I have my skill. <laughs> well, this is pretty dumb. But I'll, uh, I'll take it, I guess. Oh, sweet! Cockpit mode. Okay. Laser. All right, well, yeah, I guess, what can I say? I guess they got outplayed. What can I say? I could have taken them on. Drive secured, ma'am. You're amazing, Lynn. Now let's get out of here ASAP so we can head back to the city and report in. <laughs> that was stupid. There's a there's a collectible thing in here. Maybe I'll get it while I'm here. Maybe I'll just really quickly get it. If I can. I might not be able to right now. My goodness gracious, where is it? Is it like way at the top? Maybe? Here it is. What's this? Gosh dang it, I need the higher level archaeological. What's this? Indigenous biological level 5. Mm. Yeah, I'm going to have to do some of those off the record things soon. I'm going to prioritize skill flight. Unlocking skill flight first. And only after that level five of our field skills is my plan loading okay well we're back imagine if any company like sony or microsoft to release this two separate versions of their game have two separate season passes make you pay for online to do trading and if you want to transfer some stuff from the previous game so the next one requires another subscription yeah it's the kind of thing that pokemon gets a slip because it's pokemon which is like, oh yeah, it, it has to be that way. Technical limitations and it's more fun that way. And whoa, Pokemon. Oh man. <laughs> is that the Ganglion data drive? Excellent work. You have my thanks. Tatsu happy to get thanks, but more happy to get reward. Of course. I'll reward you for your efforts with as large a sum as I'm able. Next comes the task of decrypting and analyzing this data. Elma, perhaps you could... I'm afraid not. However, I might suggest letting a man on take a look. If you'd like, we can bring it to someone we know. I see. I leave it to you then. Find Feffin in the starboard side of the man on ship and have him analyze the data. Okay. But yeah, let's just see here. Who <laughs> actually managed to be as bad as during the Gen 3 era, which you never thought would be possible? I thought that, like, I wasn't, uh, you know, involved firsthand with Pokemon during the Gen 3 era, unless you count, like, Rescue Team, I guess. Um, but apart from that, I wasn't myself. I thought that the whole situation with, like, Pokemon in Gen 3 was just drama surrounding not being able to catch them all anymore because of, like, technical limitations of being able to transfer Pokemon from Game Boy to Game Boy Advance is all I thought it was. Was it some- was it things crazier than that? Or deeper bits of the story? That would be a huge help, yes. Thank you. When you're finished, deliver the results straight to the Director General's office, okay? You got it, okay? All right, let's go give him our report. All right, report back to Director General Shasad inside Blade Tower. We'll punch it back and forth here. All right, yeah, let's go, uh, go say hi to him again. Give our, give our report here. Dude, he's very quite relaxed. All right, I have a report. Oh, it's raining now. There's rain. I can't believe this. Wonderful. I'll expect a report from the man on. 
It seems I was correct. Your team was the right one for the job. I hope you'll continue to assist in the future. Of course, as long as our goals align. Our mutual objective is the continued survival of the human race. This will not change. Indeed. survival of the human race. Everything's a speech with that guy. No, that's one thing he's truly serious about. You know, I heard something the other day. Did you know about his son? The soldier? No. Is he a blade? He never left Earth. Apparently because of the Director General. He sent his son on a mission just before the White Veil took off. Why would he do something like that? Man, he would have sent someone else's son on that mission. Hmm. But he didn't, did he? I guess sometimes the right thing to do is also the hard thing, huh? <laughs> the music cut there pretty suddenly. There we go. You acquired the data unit and unearthed the gangling's plans for humanity. Veterans uniform, whatever that is. All right, segment recon complete. Sweet. So I believe we should be able to do chapter nine now, which is the last story chapter that has to be done for uh, for scale flight. Get all 386 Pokemon, but you need not just the gen oh, you mean like the uh, the complications there? Yeah, didn't you need to like 100% the GameCube games and some other things there? Right. Like buying the GameCube games like Coliseum or Pokemon Channels, you need the GameCube plus a cable to connect your Game Boy Advance with the GameCube plus the game. You probably need to spend 200 300 dollars just to fill up the Pokedex. Yeah, that that part I was familiar with. I thought you meant in terms of like, I guess it does sort of factor into like business practices in a way. It does in that sense, though. You know, I feel like it was a kind of combination of like, you know, technical limitations not being able to properly transfer Pokemon from Game Boy to Game Boy Advance. But, you know, being like, oh, if we can't do that, let's just make this overly complex method that involves buying other games, I guess. Like, I feel like, you know, not being able to transfer Pokemon from older games into, you know, the Gen 3 games wasn't exactly, you know, an intended design choice there, but they were like, oh, the consequence is we can use it as a way to uh, sell more games? Uh, why not? Is what I feel like it. Is what I feel like it may well have been there. Um, nowadays with like modern Pokemon, I feel like it's more so like, oh, we don't need to use this as a way to sell more games, but like we totally should and should totally, you know, go out of our way to make this be like the only method available, even though we have the technology to easily make other methods available and stuff. You know, I don't know. I don't know. I might be completely misinterpreting things. I have no idea. Um, let's see here. So we've done we've done chapter seven and eight tonight. We can do chapter nine, and uh, yeah, this will have been the most story chapters we'll have ever done in one stream. We're kind of bum rushing the story tonight, but that's to get scale flight is the reason why. I think this is the last story chapter we need to do for it. Chapter nine: Warriors of Roth. Whatever that is.